Hi everybody, review number three for today. Okay, so I've got two of these Bronco kits here, uh, and these are both, as you can see, it actually states on the US GPW. So these are actually four GPWs, both of them, um, and they, they sort of, this is how they vary between the Tamiya kit and the um, and the itinerary kit, as you saw, the itinerary kit doesn't really depict anything, to be honest. But this is actually stated as a Willys MB um, and is correct for that vehicle. Um, but I believe this would be a sort of uh, post-43. So this would be like a late 43 um, to war end vehicle. Um, very difficult to see with the you know with a 35th scale injection molded plastic kit how they would depict the difference between the willies body and the actual um and the actual composite body but uh, which i explained earlier so lighting's not that good because the reflection off these boxes is awful once we look at the sprues i'll um, i'll sort that out so basically with these these are made by bronco and we've got cb35106 and 107 uh, this is the kit that comes with a um, 10 hundred weight trailer and the airborne crew and this one uh, this kit comes with the um this is again 1942 and it comes with a 37 millimeter anti-tank gun m3a1 now what's really making these 1942 is the fact they've got ford script on the tires they've got a ford scripted body so they're actually ford gpws and ford made the vehicle 100% they made all of it so what you would find on these if, if you're a bit of a jeep fan um, these these were, were called scripted vehicles so every single part of this vehicle either had the Ford logo on it or stamped with an F mark or cast with an F mark um, even the bolt heads had an F stamped in them the willies would have had CB I think it is but then there's also differences with the um, with the sump bolts. They've got uh, recessed heads, I think, or something. If you really, really get into the Jeep world, you, you it's it's a minefield. There's so much really interesting, nitty gritty detail, little stuff. If you're if you're a modeler who's like me, you know, tends to sort to, towards the rivet counting side of things, then you'd absolutely love the Jeep world. So. Um, Basically, with these kits, as you can see, they're much bigger than the than the other kit boxes you get. But the box isn't 100% full. So um, let's have a look in here and see what we can put inside. Very tight fitting lid, as you can see. And inside, we just got one big bag of sprues. We've got a card here with our clear parts, photo etch, decals, and some other parts there. And then we've got our instructions, which is a nice color glossy manual. And we've got a nice picture to go to frame if we want to to go on the wall so that's that one so that one's still sealed up now this one i've actually done a online review on i can't remember which channel now so this one's actually been opened up so what we'll do is i'll get this out of the bags and we'll have a look and uh, look at this in more detail and see and see what we think of it Okay, so you can see we've got uh, one clear sprue there. We've got our body tub. Then we've got two small sprues. Three, four, five, six, some figures, some photo etch. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sprues there. Twelve sprues. And then we've got our decals here, which has got a little um, uh, addendum in there, which is obviously uh, they made a mistake. And we've got our different variants here, which are uh, beautifully done. I've only just found out as well. I didn't realise the the star painted on the uh, on the hood was also um, that special paint that changed colour if they if it um, if it identified mustard gas. So uh, yeah, I'm just around that. Thing is with these jeeps, you just look in. If you look at information for them, every time you look, you'll find something new. And we've got a lovely glossy instruction manual there. We've got this lovely um, poster that goes on the wall. Should you want to, and we've got here um, giving thanks for the uh, putting together of the kit, and then they suggest if you want to add some detail or whatever to to 
look up this book here, which funnily enough, I have. And uh, it is a very, very nice book, but you need to be a little bit careful. Um, some of it is inaccurate. Uh, like this one here has a blue engine. The engine in a genuine early Ford GPW would have been painted grey from the factory. Um, and then after servicing, or if it had a Willys engine put in it, it would have been painted green. Um, I also think this radiator may be incorrect. I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, it's worth looking through here. But uh, the only thing I found out today, I didn't realise, is this, this um, blue drab here. This colour was used because it doesn't show up in black and white pictures. Um, so the Germans taking photographs couldn't actually follow where all these uh, troops were coming from and, their, uh, and where they were going. So, um, and you can see here, this is the scripted tub with the Ford letter on the back. Um, and then it goes through the, the building up of the, of the Jeeps. Sorry, it looks like the radiator was correct. I think I was, uh, it's, it's so difficult to keep up with it because th there's so many different parts and you get parts that fit. I mean, like, for instance, I said earlier, my, my Jeep is, um, is a bit of a mix up and my transfer box is off of a Hotchkiss. And on a Hotchkiss transfer box, you've got a little bit of a bulge here and the main name tag goes on sideways. So, uh, yeah, all sorts of differences. But then you see I've got F-marked um, actual levers on there. Um, when I was actually rebuilding my front axles, I, I sandblasted the steering gear and I noticed some pink coming through. And uh, turned out they were um, British SAS parts, I think. So, um, yeah, or, or replica SAS parts. But they were definitely painted pink from uh, from new. So um, so there we go. And there's all our different uh, chassis shots and everything going through. So um, yes, it's a it's a nice nice book. But just be a little bit cautious about the colours. I mean, if you're building a, a, a fresh factory model, then the engine would have been grey. The bellowsing would have been grey, the gearbox would have been grey, the transfer box would have been green and everything else would have been green. Um, the radiator, oil filter, air filter, um, starter motor, dynamo and all the stuff on the top here would have been painted black. So this is all, this, this photograph is correct for a vehicle that's been through a service pool and had some servicing work done. Um, out of the factory, the engine gearbox and bellows would have been grey. So um, anyway, let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the kit. Okay, so as you can see with the uh, Bronco kit, we get a nice um, a nice manual here, and it's giving us some history, um, and it's also giving you a brief history of how it came about and the, the design and everything, um, and the the competition between Willis and Ford. Uh, Willis actually won the contract, I believe, and then. Um, and then they couldn't keep up production, so the government contracted Ford. So we've got a colour call outs here, um, all the different colours. We've got Mr. Hobby, Mr. Hobby Colour, Humbrol and Tamiya, which is nice. So you've got some basic, you know, off the shelf, common, common garden paints there. Um, we've also got a sprue call outs here. It looks like we've got pretty much nothing not being used. I can't see anything there shaded out, although it does say not used parts but I can't see anything shaded out so interesting <laughs> um, so yeah very um, very very involved little model this one so we start off with the let's just check your all in camera and everything's in shot yeah okay so we start off with a fairly nicely detailed engine we've got our side valve engine here block going together head going on and then we're going to add our dynamo um, this will be our water pump up here uh, with our hoses and then we've got our exhaust ma exhaust manifold, inlet manifold there and then we're adding the, um, the fan and the fan belt to the front, adding the um, bell housing, transmission, that's the output assembly and that little lump on the top is where your um, levers go for high and low and four wheel drive and two wheel drive and then a transfer box going on the back. Then we're adding the engine to the chassis, sitting on the gearbox cross member there, and sitting on the mounts in the side of the chassis there. And then we've got these uh, cross member supports. They're actually made of photo etch, and instead of being folded, 
they're made out of one, two, three, four, five separate pieces of photo etch per side, um, which seems a little strange for a part that's hardly visible on the finished model. I don't know why they didn't make the, the, the box sort of fold up and then, I don't know, very strange. Um, then we've got our axle here going on with our brake drum there. Now this being an early GPW, this should have detail around the outside. Um, the handbrake on, on this vehicle would have been the type where the bands were pulled in around an internal drum, not like a, a later vehicle where you had brake shoes going out into a drum. This would have had a band. If I had it with me now, it, it's downstairs, I can show you a brand new one where it actually pulls in on the drum. Um, so there's no detail there for that, although they've got five pieces per side for this cross member. Um, adding in our spring and our plates there. Um, no U-bolt detail or anything on there by the look of it, which is a shame. Oh, there is U-bolt detail on the axles here, sorry. Yes, there is. Um, then we're adding our exhaust with the bash plate, putting on the shock absorbers. It's funny, out of all these kits, the only one that has a separate exhaust and bash plate is that it's an airy kit, isn't that amazing? Um, so here we're going to add our brake drums, we've got our swivels going on, our steering arms and with this kit you get um, three different options. You can have it straight ahead, left turn or right turn and you can see if you look back at my review of the Tamiya kit or the itinerary kit where it's all molded integrally, it's quite a, a visible um, I can show you on this book here, the whole steering mechanism is quite visible on the front and you've basically got this bell crank in the middle that um, that goes off left and right and obviously pushes the, the, the tie rods. So you can see you've got a bell crank here and these steering arms, sorry, the steering arms here and the bell crank all integral with those parts turned right. Here we've got it turned left and here we've got it straight ahead. If you want to be real tricky, what you could do is um, take one of these and you could actually drill it out and pin it and make it actually swivel um, quite possibly I'm not sure how you would actually sorry you can't you've got these separate parts here for the left and right turn I'll probably build mine with a, with a steer in it um, then we're going to add our bulkhead here this is with the horn and there, there's our fuel filter going on there. Steering column, gear stick, and then our transfer box levers. And then we've got our radiator here that's in two parts with the shroud on the back. Um, telling us to paint it steel, that would actually be like a semi-gloss black colour. Um, or actually, actually I actually think the shroud would be uh, olive green and the actual radiator itself would be black. Um, check your references. And then we've got these covers going on. If you remember I said about the willies being flat, you can see on here, these are the Ford type with the actual um, flat flat covers in them. And then in the side here, there will be a hole where a push button went to actually open the cover. And I think on the ACM, it was round and on the Ford GPW, it was a square. Don't take, don't, uh, take my word for that. Have a look at your references. Um, and then we've got the battery here and our and our um, regulator pack and then we've got these brackets here for the headlights they're made of photo etch we've got these internal brackets on the body here they're made of photo etch very nice cast pedals the detail looks nice on them then we've got our multi-part seats which all look very nice fuel tank and then coming down here we've got uh, seats going in making up our instrument panel um, got the uh, eyelets on each side. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. This one's got some sort of gun mount by the look of it. Uh, I'm assuming that's a gun mount going on there, but we've still got the eyelets on the sides. And uh, yeah, that's that arrow there looks like you're putting it onto there. I'm not sure if that's correct. But uh, basically, those those um, little eye bolts they go in either side. They very extreme sides as you can see here. And then we're adding our pedals here, there's a clutch and brake pedal going in there and adding the chassis to the body tub. Um, and then we're adding our steering wheel. So we've got two different steering wheels. Um, 
not sure which depicts which. I'm not sure which would be correct for a 42. Maybe both would be correct. Um, check your references for the actual vehicle you're making, I would suggest. You can see here one is basically completely covered in like a, I don't know, a shellac or a, or a um, some sort of composite material. And this one, this is what mine is like. It's just got the, the spindles in it, which are uncoated. And then we've got our bows going on the back here, which we can have in our down position for the uh, for the canvas roof. Then we've got our jerry can on the back. And as I've told you before, uh, jerry can not standard for this truck. Um, field made by the soldier so uh, be a little bit careful what you do in there and then we've got our our um, windscreen here so it's saying um, B67 which is the uh, gun carrier is not correct for a 42 Jeep so it will be added by the uh, by the soldiers afterwards um, so this is it for an open position and this is it for a closed position, I guess. This is it with the I'm guessing this is it with it folded down. And then oh I see, this is the difference. This is the actual windscreen assembly with the glazing sitting flush, so as it would normally be up with the glazing in as it's shown here. And then this one here, we've got these photo etched parts, these sliders here where the glass slides up on. Um, here it is in the open position. So if you're going to have it down folded on the bonnet or on the hood, you would use this version. If you can have it up, but with the glass open, you would use this version. And then you've also got this version here where, where they put canvas over the glass to protect it. Which is a nice touch. You get all these different options without having to buy any extras. And then we've got all these um, pull downs, pull downs here in photo etch. Now there will be, yeah, you've got the pull down here, which is holding the hood. And this one here just clips into the sides. And actually this one, when the windscreen's down, they would be up and holding the windscreen down. Um, so here we've got the, uh, here we've got B16. Not quite sure what they're showing you here. So B16 would be attaching them, I'm guessing, with the hood down. But obviously when you let them go, they're shorter. So I'm, I'm assuming that the saying is B14 would be the part you use if you're displaying your model with the hood open. Because they look shorter to me. They're basically little spring-loaded plungers that, that, that spring closed. So basically you just pull it up and then it hooks over the little catch here, which is made in photo etch. Again, have a look at some references. There's thousands of pictures of Jeeps online. Um, so it's saying here P41 and P38 are not standard, A41 and P38. So that's the, um, the light, the fender light, I still can't think what it's called. Um, that light goes on the fender and has the guard around it there. I've got one of those for mine. Um, but it's actually saying it's incorrect for a 42. So what you have to do is fill the hole if, you go, if you're not going to use it. And then you've got a shovel and an axe going on the side. Um, that's quite unfortunate. They've gone to all the trouble of all the fuss and detail on certain little bits like, you know, these photo etched parts here, these photo etched parts here. And then they've made the handles, the, the, the hooks that hold the actual um, the shovel and the axe in, in, in all moulded in one piece, which is a shame. Real shame. Um, and here we go with our hood up, showing the hood up. And here we are with our hood down. So you've actually got the option here of, a, of a, a hood hinge with the hood up. So some great diorama, diorama possibilities with this model. Um, then we've got it here with the with the uh, open open glazing, as I was saying earlier. And here it is with it down and there it is with it covered up. Up to you whether you add the machine gun, the uh, rifle or not, or the rifle holder. They didn't all have it. Um, option one here, we've got the actual bumper going on. Um, but I'm telling you to fill, drill the small holes on A26 if necessary. Um, GPW bumpers have holes in them. So actually maybe after 42 only. But I do know that the, the GPW bumper had holes in it and the Willys didn't. 
so we'll have to check that up on our references but there we go you've got the holes here so they are correct for a GPW um, so that's what's telling you drill the holes if necessary um, check your references I'm not sure if a 42 had the holes or not um, I know mine certainly has then you've basically got this towing arm you can put in here or you've got the uh, cable cutter you can put in here as I uh, as I showed earlier on um, and you've got this stiffener here which goes on, on there which is interesting because my grill has actually got that tab on it on the back so I'm not sure if it maybe had one of them at one point in its life um, and then we've got our machine gun here going on its stand I believe it's a 50 cal um, it goes on its pedestal there and then we've got an alternative gun here is this an alternative gun um, yeah different gun here going on so we can have oh I see we can have either or we can have a machine gun there mounted on the uh, dashboard or we can have this machine gun mounted on its pedestal and then we got on to making the trailer um, and it's telling us to make some wires here from stretch sprue for the rear lights um, which is a nice touch and we've got all these little photo etch bits of bracketry here hanging off adding the actual chassis to the floor and then we're going to build up the actual um, floor of the trailer add on the sides front and rear make up our suspension add the wheels and tires and then it's telling us once, once again to use stretch sprue um, that will be uh, slack because it's a brake cable unless of course you're depicting it stopped with the with the brake cable on then it would be taut um, and then we can add it to the back of our Jeep there so there we go and then we've got some string to wrap around the front bumper I'm not sure if that's actually correct I think it would have been wrapped sideways um, and then we've got all our optional extras here so we've got some uh, water fountains we've got some ammo boxes jerry cans we've got all our bits and pieces here some machine guns it's telling us clearly what they are and then we've got our crew here that we can make up or our our people there this guy's on his laptop look as you can see because they had laptops in those days um, and then we've got all the colors color call outs so this is um 10th of june 44 so it's a 42 model jeep that made it to june 1944 mm, don't know um quite possibly i guess but it would have been pretty battered about and it would have been rebuilt a couple of times by then so um so yeah you get yeah, the sky's the limit but if you're if you're actually building this kit no one can tell you you're right or wrong whatever you do because if you're depicting something from june 44 from a 42 jeep then it would have been through the motor pools and rebuilt and everything so it, it could have willis wings it could have rifles machine guns spotlights any anything on it um and then this one here we've got again 82nd Air, Air, airborne division um 10th of june 44 so yeah check your references build it as you want to build it at, at, at the end of the day um you know with so many thousand jeeps produced you know food for produced 280,000 gpws um, they went through motor pools they were rebuilt um they had field modifications there was stuff riff, stuff ripped off them stuff added to them you know there was even an extended one built so sky's the limit really you can do what you like Okay then guys, so this is the actual instructions now for the um, the GPW but with the 37mm gun and basically up until this point in the instructions there's no difference really that I can see uh, with this one you do get the option of having the roof up so you've got the bows and the actual canvas so you can have a raised roof as it's depicted on the box and then of course you're going into the assembly of the, the 37mm gun so we've got the actual um the gun mount pivots here the the um the breech and then we've got the first part of the barrel there and then we've got a one piece barrel going on there which is obviously going to be slide molded so that's very nice um then we've got a photo etched uh, heat shield going on the side there which is nice and then matt adding on some more of the swivel mechanism it's telling us not to glue any of this so that it all operates then we've got some more detailed parts and photo etch and then we've got our adjusting wheels here again this is a beautifully highly detailed little model um, in itself and then going on from there we've got the 
I'm not sure what that pull lever is for, but it's um, it's there for a reason, and they've added they've given it to you in photo etch with a photo etch support by the look of it. So that's going to look really really nice. And then it looks like here we're going on to the chassis, making up the chassis legs. So we've got the left and the right halves there, and obviously they're going to form a triangle. Axles here, and then we're adding the some sort of protector to the bottom, or is that the uh, the, the the plate that digs into the ground? Then we've got the, the loop going on the front. We've got one here for the, this, this goes on to the actual, um, this is so you can have it onto the pintle on the on the truck, or this is so you can have it displayed. And that shaves you having to cut the pintle apart. Um, some photo etch up there. Then we're, oh I see, so you're having it in the transport position here, so it's being towed or just sat there waiting to be towed. And then this one is actually in the firing position. So again, we can, we're putting the wheels and tires on here. I'm just going to look ahead here a second. Yeah, so this is the actual firing position. So you can actually have it like this pose ready to fire. Um, and you also get the option in the kit of having the smooth treaded tires or the actual tires, which is or the actual um, off road tires, which is a nice touch as well. So perhaps put one of each on there or something, make it look well used and worn and uh, and uh, yeah, really, really nice. So adding the gun on there in the transport position with the, this is some sort of the gun mounting here. I'm not going to profess to know what it is. And then this one here is how you would load it in the combat position. So there you are, that's sat in the transport position or waiting to be towed. And that one's in the combat position. And there it is on the back of your Jeep. And then we've got some optional We've got our shells for the gun here, some 37 millimeter shells, different time, not sure what they are. Um, and then we've got ammo boxes for those shells, so you can have one of those boxes open and have some shells inside it. So you get four of each, which is really nice. You get some spent shells as well, by the look of it. By God, you get a lot in this kit. And then we've got our jerry cans there, water bottles, ammo boxes, we've got a driver figure there. And then we've got our um, satchel bags, some other bags there, rifles and some canvas there. And then there's our painting instructions. So th this one, this one's for 3rd Battalion, 1st Armed Regiment, um, Sidi Bouzid, Tunisia, Northwest Africa, 1943. And this one's for another infantry division in North Africa in 1942. So this this kit, unlike the other kit, you would if you're going to make this one, you need to be careful what you're doing. Now they're showing it on here with the rear um, the jerry can fitted. If you if you're building a 42, that jerry can would have been fitted in the field, not fitted by the factory. So you might want to put it slightly in the wrong place or something silly. Um, here we go, March 1944. So. I mean, what you could do if you wanted to build a later Jeep, if you rub that scripting off of there and I don't know how you would manage to use the tires off of something else without the Ford scripting on, you would probably get away with having this as like a 40, 44 because you haven't got the square cutouts in the back. So you could actually build this with a composite body, I think. Um, so there we go. So there's another one there from 1942. And then we've got another one here from 1942. So we've got many, many options with this kit. And uh, as you can see, I don't want to debug it, but there's, there's a very large sheet of decals there, or large for a kit of this size anyway. And we've also got markings there for the, uh, for the soldiers. So and again, we got that lovely um, the gun. So very, very nice, very, very beautiful, very, very lovely kit. So um, there we go, guys. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this review. Um, obviously, I've done a full review of the, the kit with the trailer, which is 35106, which is this one here, which you've seen all the sprues from. And then this one here, 35107. The only difference really is the roof and the actual gun on the back um, instead of the trailer. So uh, 
yeah for those out of you those of you out there that want to build a you know it's a proper military vehicle this is probably the best one to go for because you'll probably find more use and more enjoyment out of the gun than you would out of the trailer but um i think they're still available but they are very very nice kits and uh, worth hunting down so thanks for watching this i know it's been a bit of a long one but i think you'll agree they're very very involved so um Look out for a forthcoming build, I guess. I suppose I'll build the one with the uh, with the trailer as I've opened it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye bye.